Hi, this is Dave from Notes and Volt. As some of you may know, I've recently started a live stream on Twitch.tv. This way, when I'm in the workshop, I can turn on the stream and give people a behind-the-scenes look at what I'm working on. It also lets me chat with people and get to know them a little better. It's really fun. To handle all the various cameras and graphics that I use on my stream, I use a very popular program called OBS Studio. OBS allows you to organize everything into scenes that you can switch with your keyboard and mouse. But I quickly discovered that it's inconvenient for me to have the keyboard and mouse on my workbench while I'm working. So I came up with the Twitch switch. This little box allows me to switch between the various scenes very simply with one button press. It basically functions like a USB keyboard, but each button can send multiple key presses using the Shift, Control, and Alt keys. I found the Twitch switch to be very useful, so in this series of videos, I'm going to show you how you can build your own. As always, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters for helping to make this project possible. Okay, so let's get started. Here's a quick look at the parts you'll need. Visit notesandvolts.com for the full parts list, graphic files, program downloads, and more. I'll put a link in the video description. To start with, you'll need a Hammond 1590BB aluminum enclosure. These come in many different colors, but I thought the purple really suited the Twitch theme. Next, you'll need a Teensy LC microcontroller board. These boards are similar to Arduinos, but I find they handle USB a little better. Plus, they're super tiny. Next, you'll need 11 buttons. I went with this style because they're easy to find and they're very inexpensive. They come in many colors, but I went with 10 white ones and one red. To connect everything together, you'll need some 22 gauge solid wire. If possible, grab two different colors to make the wiring a little easier. Next, we'll need a short USB panel mount adapter cable. One side will have a large USB type B connector with screws to mount it to the enclosure. The other end is a micro B connector that will connect to the Teensy microcontroller board. Now that we have our parts, we're ready to start building. We'll start by marking and drilling all the holes in the enclosure. The first step is to print out the drilling template. I'll put a link in the description below where you can download it. Make sure you print it out in full scale, that's one to one size, or else nothing will fit. Now grab some scissors and cut the template out. One template's for the top of the enclosure and the other's for the USB port on the back. It's always a good idea to double check the template against the actual part. I made this template to fit the cable that I bought, but if yours is a little different, you may have to modify the template to fit your particular cable. Now take the template and center it on the top of the enclosure. Make sure it's as close to center as possible. While holding the template in place, stick one side of it down with some masking tape. Now do the same thing to the remaining sides. The next step is to mark the center of the holes for drilling. Here's a method that works really well for me. To start with, I take a sharp object like this pick or a pin would work as well. Use the tool to make a mark in the dead center of each hole. 
In this step, we're not trying to mark the metal. We're just making a small indent in the paper. Now we can use a center punch tool to actually mark the metal. You'll find the tip of the center punch will lock into the small dent we made in the paper. This will make our marks much more accurate. Now we're ready to drill the enclosure. To start off, I'm using a 1 8 inch drill bit to drill some pilot holes. You'll find that the drill bit will self-locate into the center punch marks we made earlier. Once you have it lined up, clamp the work down to the drilling table. I'm using a drill press for this, but you could also do this with a hand drill. Drill all the holes using this technique. Now we're ready to drill the full size hole. Once again, we'll center the bit in the pilot hole and then use some clamps to clamp the work down. The buttons I used for this project required a 13.5 millimeter drill bit, which is a little odd size, but I managed to find one on Amazon pretty easily. To complete the enclosure, we have to drill the holes for the USB port. To start, I use some masking tape and a ruler to mark the center point between the two holes on the top of the case. Now I'll use this mark to center the template on the back of the case. Notice that the bottom of the template is flush with the bottom of the case. Now I'll stick it down with some masking tape. Once again, I'll use the center punch to mark the center location of each hole. Okay, let's head back to the drill press. I'm gonna put some masking tape along the front edge of the case to protect it from being scratched. Now I'll position the part on the table and use a 1 8 inch drill bit to drill each of the three holes. Don't forget to clamp the part down securely. Finally, I'll change to a stepped drill bit and drill the center hole to half an inch. And that's it for drilling. The next step is to create the front panel overlay. I'll be printing out the overlay on my Canon MP530 inkjet printer using matte photo paper. Click the link in the video description to download the file and then print it out in one-to-one -one scale with high quality settings. Next, carefully cut the panel out using scissors or an X-Acto knife. I'm actually using a Silhouette Cameo to cut my graphics out, but if you don't have one of these, don't worry about it, scissors will work fine. Oops. 
Next, I'm gonna use an office laminator to add a protective coating to the panel. This is a standard hot laminating machine that I picked up from my local office supply store. To use this machine, you simply place the document inside a laminating pouch and then place that pouch inside the protective carrier. Now you're ready to run it through the laminator. This will make the panel very durable. Finally, take some scissors and trim off the excess lamination. Leave a tiny bit of excess around the edges to help keep it sealed. That's all the time we have right now, but we'll continue this project in part two. Until then, make sure you visit notesandvolts.com for more projects and tutorials. Follow on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and Twitch, and I will see you next time.